to our 2020 convocation. Let me begin with a special welcome to all of our new students, freshmen, transfers, and graduate students. Welcome also to our families, friends, returning students, faculty, staff, and members of our campus leadership who are joining us live today. My name is Yvette Mosey Ross. I am Vice Provost for Enrollment Management and Planning, and I have the tremendous pleasure of being your host today. I am so pleased to be hosting the first ever virtual UMBC Convocation Ceremony. We hope that you enjoyed the campus photos. We know that a small number of you are here today on campus and that most of you are joining us remotely. We want you to feel connected to this special place, even in these most extraordinary times. Now, I want to introduce you to our campus leadership. All of my UMBC faculty and staff colleagues have been working hard to start this academic year with safety, academic success, inclusion, and campus community as our priorities. Please enjoy this brief slideshow of our campus leaders. My team and I have been getting to know you since you launched your college search, in some cases, two to three years ago. So for me, it is especially meaningful to be a part of this ceremony to officially welcome all of our new students to our campus community. Convocation is a traditional kickoff of the academic year. It's a way to bring the UMBC campus together before classes begin. Even though we are not able to get, be together physically, we want you to know that the entire UMBC community is behind you as you embark upon this next phase of your academic journey. You may be wondering why I'm wearing this today. Regalia represents the personal academic achievement of the wearer and embodies the academic mission of the university. The style, color, and length of the robe and hood serve to distinguish the academic degree the wearer has earned and the institution that awarded it. So let's take a look at my regalia, for example. Now, in most cases, the robe or gown will be black, but in some cases, the gown color will represent the official school colors of the institution where the degree was conferred, as in the case of my gown, which is red. These three bars, located on the sleeve of my gown, represent the level of the degree that has been conferred upon the wearer, in my case, the doctorate. The dark blue velveteen trim on the hood, that specifically represents the doctorate of philosophy degree. And last, there's the headwear. Make no mistake, the regalia is not complete without the headwear, which consists of both the cap and the tassel. I'm wearing, in my case, I'm wearing a six-sided velvet tam, which is typically reserved for the doctoral regalia. 
So now you know. You'll see regalia again at your commencement. Speaking of regalia in academia, we will now hear from the Dean of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, Catherine Cole. Over to you, Dean Cole. Thank you, Dr. Mosey Ross. I am honored to be able to welcome our new students and their families to UMBC. We are delighted you have chosen UMBC, and I want you to know that you are joining an incredible community. You will soon be embarking on a remarkable journey. And while it is beginning a little bit non-traditionally in the middle of a pandemic, we are all absolutely confident that each of you will prevail and you will eventually earn your degree at UMBC. It is important that you know that we are with you on this journey. We are here to support you when you need support. We are here to cheer you when you excel. And we are here to provide the guidance and the educational opportunities that you need in order to be successful. Our faculty who will teach you are outstanding scholars in their own fields but they're also caring and compassionate people who are dedicated to your educational experience and your success. I read once that people remember only about 10% of what they hear, um, especially in presentations. So I leave you with a quote that I hope will be the 10% that you remember from this. It's from an African proverb and it says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. We here at UMBC all want you to go far, and we are here with you to ensure that you will. So once again, welcome students and family to UMBC. I would like to introduce our next speaker. Each year, one faculty member who has distinguished themselves as a teacher and in their professional accomplishments is selected as the Presidential Teaching Professor. Our next speaker is the 2020 awardee, Dr. Lee Blaney, Associate Professor, Chemical, Biochemical, and Environmental Engineering. Dr. Blaney. Well, thank you, Dr. Cole, and welcome to our new students and their families. My name is Lee Blaney, and as Dr. Cole mentioned, I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Chemical, Biochemical, and environmental engineering here at UMBC. Well, obviously we're doing things a little different this year, but as a professor, I think it's important for me to ask you some questions, even if I can't see you. Okay, and my first question is a big one. Who knows what they wanna do with their life? Go ahead and raise your hand or shout it out. We can make as much noise as we want here today. All right, if you raise your hand, that's great. You have a plan and we here at UMBC are gonna help you achieve it. And if you didn't raise your hand, that's also great because you're flexible and you're gonna learn a lot at UMBC and build that plan for yourselves. And I'll tell you, when I was in your position, I would not have raised my hand. I actually, I didn't know what I wanted to do until about midway through college. My life really changed when I saw one of my professors speak about his research treating arsenic contaminated groundwater in rural Indian villages. My professor was quite literally saving people's lives. And after hearing about that work, I decided that I wanted to do the same thing. So I reached out to him and I got involved in undergraduate research. So I was flexible to start and then I built my plan. And a few years later, I actually had the chance to travel to India. I met men, women, and children suffering from arsenic poisoning and I got to participate in building engineering solutions to improve that situation. This was a life-changing experience for me. I wouldn't be here today if not for that opportunity. My professor, Dr. Arup Sengupta, changed my life. He taught me how to harness my education to improve the lives of others. At UMBC, I think you're going to have similar experiences and find similar mentors, whether it comes through undergraduate research, extracurricular activities, or in your classes. And that brings me to my second question. Who's nervous about being online this semester? Well, again, I can't see you, but I'll raise my hand on behalf of many of the professors. Okay, we would all love to be in the classroom together, 
but I can tell you, your professors have been working hard to adapt to this new situation. And my best advice for you is to show up, be present in class, and with your new peers. Ask questions, let your professor know what's working and what's not working. This is a new world for all of us, and we're gonna to need to work together in order to move you forward with your education, your career goals, so that you can go out and change the world. This has been a tough year, but your professors are here for you, and I think we're gonna have a great semester and great year. And I'll now send it back to Dr. Mosey Ross. Those inspiring, re those were inspiring remarks, Dr. Cole and Dr. Blaney. Keep in mind that both our faculty and our staff are here to help you as you navigate your way through university life. We care deeply about you and we want you to succeed. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions or you need help. Now, as you start your UMBC experience, you may wonder about university life, student engagement involvement in co-curricular activities. These are incredibly important parts of life as a college student. And while they may look a little different this semester, there are still many ways to get involved. As part of the UMBC student body, you are represented by the Student Government Association. These students are actively engaged in creating a distinctive community, supporting co-curricular and academic experiences, and identifying and giving voice to students' hopes and concerns. We will hear from your SGA president, Mershad Devon, someone who has been active in student leadership on campus since his freshman year. He is committed to helping UMBC connect to the communities around us. We will also hear from Callista Ogburn, a senior in health administration and policy and director of communications in SGA. She is a poet and has published two books of poetry. Take it away, Mershad. Thank you, Dr. Mosey Ross. My name is Mershad Devon. I'm a rising junior majoring in biology and physics on the pre-med track. I'm also currently serving as the elected president of your student government association. And here with me is my friend, my colleague, Calissa Auburn. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Calista Auburn. I am a rising senior majoring in public health with a minor in Asian studies. I am the SGA Director of Communications, President of the Retriever Poets, and a former peer health educator for University Health Services. And that's why I would probably be one of the people to remind you to wear your mask. <laughs> Calista and I would like to first and foremost welcome the incoming students and their families into the UMBC community. You will all soon be a part of a tightly knit family that looks after each other no matter what issues we're facing. That is completely right, Mershad. So no matter what issues we are facing, being a student at UMBC is an exceptional experience. Faculty, administration, staff, and often graduate and undergraduate students all work together to make sure the UMBC experience is the best it could be for everyone. There are a bunch of opportunities for students to grow and prosper, not only academically, but also in their personal and professional lives. For me, it was Retriever Poets. Mershad, what was it for you? So coming into UMBC, I was not planning to be as active as I am right now. Um, I remember for the first few weeks, all I did was go to class, grab authentic pasta from Tomatoes on my way back to my dorm, and I would spend the rest of my day playing video games. Um, I didn't have a lot of friends. I was bored out of my mind, and I was not in a good mental place. Um, I would say my life changed when I first picked up the pamphlet for the First Year Ambassadors Program at Involvement Fest. Um, this is a year-long internship for freshmen that are interested in holding SGA positions. And through that program and SGA, I learned how to be an active member of my campus community. Um, the program not only helped me become more organized in my academics and my professional life, but it also gave me a lot of networking opportunities and lifelong, fr lifelong friendships, which I still cherish up to this day. Um, through SGA, I was familiarized with both of my social and my professional fraternities. Um, I also joined Model United Nations and the Persian Student Association, which is a cultural organization which I also have the privilege of leading. Um, it taught me how to be an effective student leader. It taught me, um, you know, it taught me to be responsible. And every single 
officer, every single SG officer, not only works diligently to make sure that the UMBC experience is as best as it could be for the rest of us, but they also um, spearhead student-led initiatives that create a positive change on campus. Um, they also have regular conversations with admin and faculty and provide their undergraduate point of view. What about you, Kalissa? That is so interesting, Rashad, because my experience was completely different. When I first arrived at UMBC, I was really afraid. I had just graduated from an international high school from Seoul, South Korea, and I didn't know what to expect. I was part of the Shriver Living Learning Community and was so grateful to have such a set of close friends living on my floor. I attended the loud soccer games, the welcome week events, and stayed up until five in the morning having deep talks with all of my friends. <laughs> but on the inside, for some reason, I was still crying and I felt that I didn't fit in. I would take night walks to the library pond and journal until one in the morning and I felt at peace there. And I would occasionally see students walk by laughing with their friends and I wanted to have that. I was part of student organizations here and there, but I wanted to have a lasting impact on campus. And at the time, I just didn't know how. And so years passed, and as a senior now, my roommate and I are still friends. Even though on the first day of freshman year, she claims she didn't like me at first, but now we are inseparable. So if you and your roommate don't get along at first, that is completely okay, because who knows, you could be best friends later on. And so, however, I lost touch with the friends I made on my floor. I thought I would spend the rest of my four years hand in hand with them, but I quickly learned that it's okay to let go of some friends. I learned about the importance of having friends that help with my growth. And so most of my friends today are from the student organizations I discovered during my freshman year. Coming from Korea, it was really difficult for me to make friends until one day I saw flyers at Involvement Fest and discovered two new student organizations, the Retriever Poets and We Believe You. The Retriever Poets creates and supports a space for writers to share their original work, and We Believe You is an activist group for survivors of sexual assault. And at that moment, I knew I was at home. I wasn't afraid anymore, and throughout my four years at UMBC, I still go to the library pond. Well, not now, but mentally. But the library pond wasn't just a body of water for me to sit next to and cry. It was a place for me to hold my tears. It reminded me of all of the challenges of trying to find the right set of friends, which is part of that journey. And not only do I have friends from those student organizations now, but I sat with them at that pond. We laughed, shared poetry, and cried, but with each other. So you just heard from Kalissa and how she was plugged into our community from the get-go and had to make tough decisions regarding her friend groups. And you also heard from me and how it took a little bit longer for me to get plugged into you know, the community and find my friends. But with over 200 student organizations, there are numerous ways that you, an incoming student, can get plugged into our community. And if you can't find what you like, just get a group of friends and organize a new one. With all that being said, Calissa and I would like to formally extend an invitation for you all to participate in Welcome Week activities and Involvement Fest, which are both being held in a virtual format this year. So whether you are a transfer or a first year student, resident or a commuter, whether you love poetry like me or want to be involved in theater, humans versus zombies, club sports and so much more, there are a variety of student orgs just for you. So even though I knew I wanted to join Retriever Poets, I joined other clubs that I didn't even think I would be a part of. And who knows, in three or four years, you could be here just like me and Mershad talking to incoming students. Kalissa, before we turn it back to um, Dr. Mosey Ross, what is one thing that you wish you knew during your first year? That the friends that you make can completely shape your life at UMBC. However, it is completely okay to let go of the ones that inhibit your growth. Navigating this pandemic can be difficult. Therefore, it is so important to find others who can go on that journey with you. And even if they don't stay the entire time, you can say, hello, come on in and goodbye. Thank you for being here. So what is one thing you wish you knew during your first year, Mershad? I would say to never wait for others to give you the college experience that you have in mind. While they can point you in the right direction, it is up to you and only you to make your college experience your own. 
I took the initiative to pursue what I like and shaped it in my own vision, and I have never been happier than I am right now. How will you make UMBC your home? One last big welcome to all of our new retrievers, and now I would like to send it back to Dr. Mosey Ross. Thank you, Rashad and Kalissa. As you can see, we have amazing and engaged students at UMBC. As they have said, there are numerous opportunities to be connected to campus, which will enhance your college experience. As Rashad mentioned, check out the upcoming Involvement Fest from September 8th through the 11th. And now we're here from our extraordinary president, Dr. Freeman Rabowski. Dr. Rabowski has served as president since 1992, bringing great energy, vision, and leadership to the university. He is also known for taking a personal interest in all UMBC students. When on campus, he often stops students and asks about their last grade on their exam because he is dedicated to ensuring that all students reach their goals and achieve their full potential. Welcome, Dr. Rabowski. Thank you, Dr. Mosey Ross. Let me take this off so they can know who I am when they see me. I'm delighted to be here and to welcome all of our new students. And let me start by thanking all of our speakers, Dr. Cole, and of course you, Dr. Mosey Ross, and Dr. Blaney, amazing faculty and, and administrators, and these incredible students. Um, everybody, I want you to give the students, both Mashad and Calista, a round of applause in any way you can. This is one way, a certain group that I like over at Gallaudet will do it, saying congratulations, thank you. So let me talk about the meaning of convocation and why we do this. The fact is that convocation comes from the Latin word convocare, and it means a calling together. And we think it's very important as a part of our tradition to bring our new students together, to give them a sense of the possibilities and the vision. We have this academic regalia on because you'll be seeing us in this before you know it. Um, and I want you to use your imagination for a minute right now. Usually we're sitting together physically, and I will say to people this, look at the student to your left and look at the student to your right. So now, even though you're at home, use your imagination, be creative, and follow my instructions. Look at the imaginary student to your left, look at the imaginary student to your right. And then years ago, presidents and deans would always say, one of you will not graduate. Well, that's a terrible thing to say to people. The fact is, now I want you to follow me. Look at that imaginary, wonderful UMBC student to your left. Look at the one to your right. And then I want you to hear me saying, all three of you will graduate. And it's so important to think that way. I want you to breathe deeply and know I will graduate. I'm going to do this. It's something about that self-fulfilling prophecy. These are unusual times. And what I think about is the fact that the challenges that we are facing right now, quite frankly, are not new. Uh, there was pestilence thousands of years ago and, and the plague, for example, all kinds of challenges that we face. But the challenges that we face are the challenges that humankind has faced. Whether we're talking about the unpredictability of circumstances or when we look at the way we have to do things differently or the fact that we need more courage now to get through this period, or the idea that it's only through having an attitude that says we have the hope to know it will be okay. What's wonderful about education is that it gives us a chance to understand where we are today. It gives you a chance as students to think about who you are now and who you want to become, to listen to the stories of other students, to listen to the stories of people from all over the world, to listen to the stories of your faculty and your staff members. And so I want you to think about those skills that will be most important. You will be learning to think critically. You think well already, but this will give you a chance to learn even more how you think deeply and critically, how to read carefully, how to listen. We as a, as a, as a society must learn to listen to other perspectives and to find when possible that common ground, but to put yourself in, in the shoes of other people for example, and then the ability to speak well and to write with clarity. These are all the skills that will always make such a difference and the compassion to feel for other people. Right now, so many people are going through challenging times as we all are, but some are going through times that are more challenging than others. 
Some are going through the illnesses of COVID-19. Some have lost their jobs. Uh, some groups, uh, people of color, African-Americans, low-income people have found themselves dying in larger numbers, people of Chinese descent. We're seeing all these groups that because of the disparities in our society are suffering more than others. And so I want us to think about the fact that while we may be disappointed in some ways, we have so much going for us right now. And then as students, I want you to understand that this is a time at the university when we will help you think about what's happening in the world, of how we think about COVID-19, of how we think about social unrest, how we think about the economic challenges that we're facing. It's significant that our graduate who is leading this fight for the vaccine, Dr. Kizmikia Corbett, actually majored in biology and sociology here. And hers is the vaccine that is with Moderna right now in phase three. It's a big deal. It really is. But I like the fact that she was grounded in the social sciences here. And she understands that this challenge we face is not only about science, and public health, but also about the human condition. And there are reasons, many reasons beyond those of science that have to be taken into account as we work to understand how we solve this problem. And so the notion of interdisciplinarity, you will hear, how disciplines are connected. Well, they're talking about how we stop discriminating against people, how we understand what structural racism means, how we look at the way we treat people from other countries or people from LGBTQ groups or people who are from different religions, that we have to learn not to discriminate against people who are different from ourselves. And that's what UMBC is known for. And so I challenge you to think about how you can make a difference. The social protest will represent one part of the democracy, but what happens after that protest? Then we must Act. And the acting has everything to do with our ability to vote and to become leaders in different sectors, whether we're going to be artists or teachers or lawyers or doctors, engineers, and how we use our lives and our skills to improve the human condition. And so I, I want you to think about the, the Center for Democracy and what we do in helping people to vote. We don't want to tell you whom to vote for, but we want you to vote because it's through voting that we shape our society. It's at the heart of the democracy. Today is special because it is the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. Before that, women could not vote. And so we celebrate all those women from different backgrounds who fought for that, that, that amendment because it made such a difference. 40 years after that, from 1920 to 1960, my grandmothers could still not vote. Everybody has a story. And my grandmothers had to work so hard in the early 60s to figure out a way to vote because there was something called the Alabama Literacy Test. I want you to Google it and take a part of that test. It's on the Constitution. Whites, even whites who could not, could not write, could just put an X there for their name and they could vote. But blacks had to pass that test. My grandmother failed it twice. And then she was so brilliant, even with just a sixth grade education, that she got her friends to memorize parts of that test and put it together so they could study it. And I remember working with her on questions from the Constitution. The third time she took that test, she passed it. And when she walked in our house, she looked me in my eyes and she said, I am now a first-class citizen of the United States of America. She's, she was 70 years old. Here you are at your age. You have that right, that privilege, and that responsibility to vote. And so I challenge you to think about all the people who have all kinds of obstacles even today that may keep them from voting, to not only vote yourself but help other people. It is your responsibility, all of us, to think about the fact that of those to whom much is given, much is required. You'll hear me saying this throughout your time here. Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Dreams and values keep hope alive. Welcome to UMBC. Now back to Dr. Yvette Mosey Ross. Thank you, President Thank you. Rabowski. What an inspiration you are to all of us. We have just a few more items on the program today. Next, we will hear from Nancy Young, Vice President for Student Affairs. Student Affairs provides support to our students and their families through programming and services, including campus life programs, health and wellness education and initiatives, and our Family Connections Program. Over to you, Dr. Young. Thank you, Dr. Mosey Ross. I, students and families, take a deep breath. We are in the home stretch. 
at our university, we have many traditions that we love to celebrate and few of them, other than perhaps graduation, are as precious as convocation. Just as graduation, when we celebrate your success and you're going off into the world, whether that's to graduate school, to employment, or to choosing to raise families, or simply exploring the world for a while on your own, we are so excited for convocation because it marks the formal moment when you, all of our new students, are officially welcomed into and become part of our community with all the rights and privileges of membership in an academic community of excellence. Now, one of the things we know is that even if you, like me, I can still clearly remember sitting in the seats where you were, and it was a long time ago for me, and wondering how I'd gotten here and questioning if I was as smart as everyone else around me since everybody kept telling me how smart everybody was here. But I can assure you that since the time you applied, we have been reviewing your applications. We have been reading your essays and each of you has presented the qualifications, the motivation, and more importantly, you have picked us because you've recognized this is a place where we are serious about the life of the mind, yet still have fun with all sorts of intellectual play and learning outside of the classroom. As the Vice President for Student Affairs, I get to work with remarkable students, whether that's on helping them organize trips um, for our medical break brigades at spring break to go assist in other countries, or whether it's right here in home where people will spend time in Baltimore City and in our areas immediately around the campus volunteering, or if it's with the poetry club that you heard Callista talk about, or when I have to duck the Nerf guns during Humans versus Zombies Week. But the most important thing you see is that with the privilege of coming to UMBC, we know that you are going to be the next generation of leaders. In this crazy time that Dr. Rabowski just talked about, of COVID and unrest and thinking about justice and all the things in our world that are swirling right now. Some of my colleagues say, what gives you hope? One of our soccer players asked me this yesterday. And I said with all sincerity, the students at UMBC give me hope. And when I see this new class coming in, you lift me in ways I cannot explain. Because what I know is that with each generation that questions the truth, and then finds new answers. With each generation that devotes themselves to academic excellence and finding truth, and maybe not one truth, but the truth and knowing how to assess what is true and when we must search again because something has changed. That gives me hope because I know as you've lived through this difficult time, even as we're on video screens, you are going to figure out how to find those relationships that Kalista and Mershad talked about, and they are going to support and sustain you. We know that UMBC is a place with all the love, and I do use love. We don't usually say love about education, but this is a place that will love you and that will take you into their arms, much like a small liberal arts college that's very tiny where everyone knows each other with all the cutting edge experience of a public research institution, where even Dr. Blaney, who's sitting on the screen is doing some of the cutting edge research about how do we test our water systems right here in Baltimore, or perhaps even on campus to find out the prevalence of COVID. I think that's pretty cool that someday we could understand illness just by testing our wastewater. So if you're interested in that, take a class with Dr. Blaney. Um, and so what I'm saying to you is you are here because you are academically excellent or will be. If you were like me, I didn't do so well my first semester. But by the, my last years, I'd figured out how to get back to those A's that I was getting in high school. It's a place where everyone treats each other with dignity and respect and learns to have those fun and sometimes challenging conversations about social issues. And it is a place that you've all heard we have grit. But we define grit at UMBC a little bit differently. Grit is not about pulling yourself up by yourself, by your bootstraps. Grit is about having the courage to say, I need help. 
Can I be in your study group? I am not eating dinner with any one night. Can I go along with you? And that grit is based in our community that pulls us up. When someone isn't doing so well, friends come and tell us and we get them support. And so we are grateful and we are grateful that you are here and we have reached the best part of our traditions. Many of you by now should have gotten a black box. I was gonna hold it up, but it probably would be too messy. And in it um, was a pin that looks just like this. I hope you were able to read those instructions or get a call from your Wooly that said to have that pin out. This pin is our symbol of commitment to you. It is our symbol to be there when you need help. It is our symbol to teach you the highest ideals of our academy and to give you access to cutting edge research and knowledge, to support you all the way through your applications to grad school or to that amazing job that you're going to get. And we pride ourselves in how well we do that and have a very good track record in both. So this pin, put it on your bulletin board, pin it somewhere on one of your teddy bears. Yes, we know you still have them even though you came to college. I still have mine. So put this somewhere where you're always going to remember it, but not yet. This is also your commitment to us. And I'm about to turn it back over to Dr. Mosey Ross to introduce a group of our amazing student leaders that are going to lead you in our pinning ceremony where you will pledge to live up to all of our highest ideals, including the ability to be part of this community, to support others, and to ask for help when you're struggling, because at UMBC, success is never final, and we are only successful when all of us are successful. So I could not be more delighted. See me, I'm moving. I almost want to dance. I'm so happy that you're here. I can't wait to meet all of you. So let me get it back to Yvette or Dr. Mosey Ross so that we can get this pinning going. Welcome everyone, we couldn't be happier. Thank you, Thank Dr. Young. And now our students will lead us in the, the pinning ceremony tradition. We take great pride in this portion of the convocation. Because it is our way of welcoming new students to the UMBC family. The pin reflects the paw of the retriever, our mascot at UMBC. It will serve as a reminder to get involved while you're here and that you are part of a larger UMBC community. Not only on campus, but in Maryland and throughout the country. You, you may now put on your UMBC Thank you students for that moving pinning ceremony. Now our new retrievers are official members of the UMBC community. We're coming to the close of convocation. As you started to see, we have a lot of traditions here at UMBC. Another is to end campus wide ceremonies by standing, if you're able, and singing our alma mater. The words were included in your welcome box Please take them out and prepare to join us in song. Please also take the time to learn the words to the alma mater so you can join us in song for many, many years to come. Thank you for joining together today as a UNBC community. Again, welcome to all of our new students and family. We hope you enjoyed this convocation ceremony and we wish you the best as you begin classes. Now, Please stand wherever you are and join with the UNBC Camarada in singing the UNBC alma mater. Welcome to UNBC.